Sometimes it's hard to believe, but we do actually have some friends in the media. But our next speaker is more than just a friend. He's a dedicated, hardworking defender of freedom who believes it's the duty, the duty of every elected official to uphold the Constitution of the United States. He has hosted one of the most successful radio talk shows in the country and is a regular contributor on Fox News. And he works every election cycle to help elect candidates who share his dedication and that of his father to liberty and the American values. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to introduce Mr. Michael Reagan, a gentleman and a scholar and the son of a president. Thank you. Thank you. It is an honor and a privilege for me to be here and visit with you again as I did just a year ago in Arizona. Listening to Ambassador John Bolton, who I've known for many years, I thought there's one story I need to share with you, which would be a follow-on, which he talked about the President of the United States, our Constitution, and how the President plays in that, making determinations on how to protect the citizenry of the United States of America. If I could take you back for a moment to the 1980s, my wife Colleen and I, sitting in a room with my father in Los Angeles, just finishing dinner, getting ready to leave and go home, my father to go to bed, received a phone call from Ed Meese. Ed Meese was calling my father because we were doing war games in the Gulf of Sidra. Muammar Gaddafi was not happy with this. And so Ed Meese called to ask my father what should be done because Muammar Gaddafi was sending planes out into the Gulf of Sidra to lock on to our men and women flying. And so he asked the question, what should we do if they fire upon us? My father said, fire back. <laughs> Ed Meese then said, Mr. President, what happens if they fire and turn and run? My father said, chase them. <laughs> he then said, Mr. President, what happens if they turn and run back into their own airspace? My father answered, Ed, you tell those in charge, if they fire upon our boys, you chase them all the way back to their hangars if necessary, but you will shoot them down. Ed then said, Mr. President, do I need to wake you? My father said, no. <laughs> he went to bed. We went home, and the next morning, two Libyan aircraft were in the ground, shot down by our men in the sky. The president made a determination. He didn't call the United Nations to get permission. He did what he was elected to do protect the sovereignty of the United States. I thought about what I would say here today, and it took me back to 1976. It was the year my father lost the nomination of the party. And I remember him coming down to the convention floor and speaking to those left in the convention hall and to an audience at home. And he talked about the fact he had been asked to write a letter to be put into a time capsule to be opened on the 300th anniversary of the United States of America in 2076. And he talked about the daunting task of what he should write. And as he drove up the coast of California with the Pacific on his left and the San Ynez Mountains on his right, he thought about, what do I put in this letter? What do I put in this time capsule? Do I write about the freedoms that we so enjoy here in the United States of America? And he thought to himself, if we do not make the right decisions today, those that live in 2076 on the 300th anniversary of the United States of America, they may not even have the freedom to open up the time capsule to read the letter he had written to them. 
He thought, do I write about nuclear proliferation and those who in fact have nuclear weapons? But then they will know whether we made the right decision today. They will know whether those weapons were in fact used. It's a daunting task, but it all involves making the right decision. That was 1976. It took four years to make the right decision. It's now 2010. We have to make the right decision again. Newt Gingrich, Newt Gingrich asked me a while back, why is it that your father can win an election? We seem to fall apart. Maggie Thatcher can win, and we seem to fall apart himself. Be elected Speaker of the House, and the party seems to fall apart. And I said, it's very simple. If you think about the liberals in this country, they are like termites. They are eating away at the foundations of our country each and every day. That is their job. Our job is, we have jobs. <laughs> so what happens at election time, we elect our people to office and then we go home to our jobs and they're just starting to work. Scott Brown, a perfect example. Everybody thought the health care issue was done, but the liberals were just beginning while we were at work. And now health care is part of America in Washington, D.C. and around the United States. He said, what do we need to do? I said, we need to work 24-7. I look at this organization, NRA, and all of those here today, and I think about the fact you'll all go home and you'll all write down where you were the weekend of May 13th of 2010, but what will you be doing on May 15th and 16th and 17th and 18th? Because it is that important that we work every day to tent those termites and take back the freedoms that are being taken away from us each and every day, even as we sit here. My father talked about something else that day in 1976. My father asked for a call to arms. My father didn't choose words lightly. I believe he was probably thinking of Thomas Jefferson back in 1787, when Thomas Jefferson was the U.S. ambassador to France. At a time, he wrote a letter to a friend of his, a New York judge named William Smith. And in the letter, Jefferson commented on reports he received about the Shays Rebellion, an armed uprising in Massachusetts led by Revolutionary War veteran Daniel Shays. A thousand poor Massachusetts farmers revolted, demanding relief from debt and taxation. The rebellion lasted almost six months before it was swelled or stopped. But what came out of that was the founders of this country looked at the Shays Rebellion and they reacted. They looked at the Articles of Confederation and said this needs to be replaced and they replaced it with the United States Constitution something we need to tell our elected representatives they need to live by today. Writing, <laughs> writing about the Shays Rebellion, Jefferson told Smith, God forbid we should ever be 20 years without such a rebellion. If the people remain quiet, it is a lethargy, the forerunner of death to the public liberty. And what country can preserve its liberties if its rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood and patriots of patriots and tyrants. What Thomas Jefferson saw has come true. We have reached the point where the very existence of the United States of America is threatened by a radical leftist agenda of out-of-control spending, out-of-control taxation, government takeover of health care, nationalization of private industry, ruinous regulation, the welfare state, oppressive restrictions of religious expression, political correctness, and on and on, and of course, the right to bear arms. Jefferson and the Founding Fathers would not recognize our America today. I am sure you started today's event with a national anthem. 
You get to a point in the national anthem about the home of the brave, land of the free. Are we really free? And how brave are we? Are we brave enough to stand up each and every day to the leftist agenda and finally take this country back? Because that's what's going to take bravery to put freedom and bravery back into the Star Spangled Banner. Ronald Reagan called for a call to arms in 1976. That call to arms is being echoed today across this country in this hallway and many other hallways across this country. This call to arms will be a bloodless revolution carried out through the political process, but it will be a real revolution producing top to bottom change. We will produce a revolutionary change by rebuilding and re-energizing my party. And let's be honest here, if my party had done their job when they were in Washington, we wouldn't be losing our freedoms today. We need to return to conservative values, conservative principles. Ronald Reagan set the example for us. He showed us how to restore a political party that has fallen into disrepair and disfavor. He showed us how to build a vital and effective political party, a successful political campaign, an effective administration. He showed us how to turn a grassroots political movement into eight years of transformational leadership on the world stage. That's what Ronald Reagan did. In short, he showed us how to change the world. My charge to you is, damn it, let's go out and change it and win one for the Gipper. Thank you very much. Thank you.